once man had learned how to domesticate fire, he also began to work metal. Down the centuries, he perfected his skills and developed new raw materials. Today, he is endeavoring to unlock the ultimate secrets of nature. We are now hard on the track of one of these secrets. You guys all go? Okay. I know it's not a conventional flux, but what interests me are the fields of application and the competitive advantages of the product. Please. The composition of the suspension is, of course, a secret. But uh, I can show you a few highlights from the production process. As you know, Perfect contact can only be achieved on a metallically clean, i.e. reactively responsive, material surface. So, your flux is designed to eliminate oxides and other unwanted surface films during the heating process? Right. And to prevent any recurrence of surface oxidation. Sounds very good. Carry on. Here, look at this. What is it? Goat's milk? <laughs> no, knock a lock flux on an aqueous suspension, and here in powder form. Knockalock Flux, a rather unusual name. Mm, an unusual name for an unusual product of unusual purity. As you know, this is what gives it the edge, both in production and economically. I know. Do you actually use it only for brazing aluminium components? I mean, heat exchangers? No, we also use it for brazing pipes on evaporators. For example, in refrigerators, and for compensation base plates on cooking pots. And for brazing heating coils for electric percolators, right? Right. How did you know? But the main users of Knockalock Flux are people who make heat exchangers for the automotive industry. You mean air conditioners? Yes. And, of course, people who make condensers, evaporators, water coolers, oil coolers, and heaven knows what else. Super. envisage the production process? Roughly like this. After degreasing the aluminium components, the heat exchangers are sprayed in a second production step with a knockalock flux suspension. Then everything is pre-dried and afterwards brazed in a furnace at about 600 degrees centigrade. What's important to know is that the actual knockalock brazing process takes place in a nitrogen atmosphere. This prevents renewed, renewed oxide film formation. That's interesting. Hmm. And of course, we make sure that the concentration of knockalock flux and the slurry remains stable throughout the entire process. A pretty wet business. <laughs> you mean your coffee? No. This fluxing method using a suspension of knockalock. Don't you have it a little drier? Hmm. Ever heard of electrostatic fluxing? I'm all ears. Right. In electrostatic fluxing, the knockalock particles get electrostatically charged and are sprayed onto the heat exchanger by compressed air. Like in powder spray coating. Exactly. The electrostatic process is more environment friendly and covers more evenly than fluxing with knockalock suspension. And above all, it's much more cost effective. Because you the see. The drying stage is cut out and it therefore requires less energy. My compliments. You're really well informed. Where did you acquire this knowledge? Well, let's just say mm, I have a professional interest in physico-chemical processes. You don't say. The most interesting thing for me at the moment are the processes inside the furnace. There's very little to see. Quite right. The production process is fully automated. A furnace brazing is used chiefly for making heat exchangers. Uh, just a minute. If you really want to know what happens, uh, take a look at the drawing. The drawing illustrates the production sequence. 
Aha. That's where the aluminium parts are fluxed. Pre-dried. Mm -hmm. And braised. And here, nitrogen is fed in and pumped out again. And this is what a condenser looks like after leaving the brazing furnace. Hardly any residues, clean surfaces, and therefore there's no need for reworking. That means that... Higher output and lower unit costs. So knock-a-luck flux is really economical. Fantastic. But what really does happen during the furnace brazing? A good question. See here, where the fin meets the pipe. If you take a closer look, you'll see the aluminium having a layer of brazing sheet alloy. On the surface of the brazing alloy, a layer of aluminium oxide has developed. The impurity. Mm, you should say the natural protective layer. And on top of that, you can see the knock -a -lock flux layer. Hey, <laughs> take it easy. What happens when you apply heat? Under the influence of heat, the knock -a -lock flux layer begins to melt and dissolves the aluminium oxide. The precondition for brazing. Precisely. Because it's not till now that aluminium is in contact with aluminium without unwanted contamination of the surfaces. And the melting brazing alloy can then join the work pieces together. Mm, good clean job. In the true sense of the word. Interesting. Hmm. So the flux material, I mean knock -lock flux, is sprayed on as a suspension. Thousand dollar question. How is the brazing alloy applied? In actual practice, the work pieces are generally supplied with a plating of brazing alloy. In our research laboratory, we also use aluminium chips where we add the brazing alloy separately. Look at this one. Research laboratory. Sounds interesting. Am I right in supposing that our aluminium chip is being fluxed right now? Yes, after having been cleaned, of course. Just like in real life? Quite right. For real, it's cleaned, fluxed and pre-dried. In this experimental setup, you can see how the workpieces are joined by the brazing alloy. Of course, nitrogen is added throughout the brazing process. Just like for real. <laughs> and now watch carefully. The temperature in the experimental furnace is around 600 degrees centigrade. First, the flux melts and gets rid of the oxide layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the brazing alloy melts and joins the two work pieces. Most impressive. And what about experiments on an industrial scale? I mean, with real heat exchangers. Oh, these two. At our technical center, in the batch type furnace and in our corrosion chamber, to name two of them. Hmm, pretty good. Tell me, are there any other industrial processes where knock -lock flux can be applied? Yes, for example, in induction brazing and resistance brazing, and also in torch brazing procedures, knock -lock flux is a useful helpmate. This process is very suitable for brazing pipes. applications, but who's actually behind it all? Alcam? Solvay International? Solvay Germany? 
Well, with its 400 branches in more than 40 countries, Solvay is a chemical company with international clout. Worldwide, we have nearly 40,000 on the payroll. I know. And you've united your worldwide fluorine commitments into an international business unit in Hanover. But the focus of your production is in Bad Wimpfen. What does the production process look like there? And what do you do about quality assurance? <laughs> I can't help admiring your single-mindedness. Right. Bad Wimpfen is the production location for Nocolog Flux. The product was developed by Solvay in collaboration with Alcan, and it's marketed by us worldwide. And what about quality assurance? In all modesty, Nocolog Flux from Solvay has given us undisputed market leadership, and we're registered under the DIN ISO 9001 quality standard. I thought you would have known that. Hmm, so your DIN ISO 9001 quality registered and the brazing process is energy saving and environment friendly and the product is... Easy to store and it's also easy to handle. Any more questions? Yes, the formula. What's the exact chemical composition? <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> that's to say, I assume that this conversation is strictly confidential. Rest assured. Right. Nocolog flux is a powder consisting of potassium fluoroaluminate. The melting point diagram of the binary system, composed of potassium fluoride and aluminium fluoride, shows at around 45 mole the eutectic point of 565 degrees centigrade. And since Nocolog flux doesn't contain any hygroscopic constituents, it's not corrosive either. So this means the workpiece components don't have to be reworked. In plain English, this means that Nocolog flux, compared to conventional processes, is not only more environmentally compatible... ...but is more cost-effective. Yes, hello? Yes, of course. I understand. I'm sorry we have to interrupt our little tete-a-tete, but... ...exceptional circumstances, you understand. Unfortunate. I hope it's nothing serious. Uh, no. Goodbye, then. Well, goodbye. If you'd like to know more about Nogalock Flux, just give us a ring. We have no secrets to hide. <laughs>